Hey, what's up, social media family? Hope everybody is having a really, really good day. I want to share a word with you that I got earlier this morning. I got up and I went through my morning routine. You know, got up, had my coffee, my prayer time, uh, got my workout in. My family, we took a few laps around our, our neighborhood and did my mountain bike ride and just getting the day started. And it was just like, I just pulled aside and, and I said, God, I, I'm just going to set for a moment. I know you have something you want me to release. So I just got along with the Lord and, and I just heard something so clear. Conflict management matters. I thought about it for probably, you know, about two minutes or so. And then I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> my favorite college class, I call it cemetery, not seminary, <laughs> that I ever took in ministry school was conflict management. I said, oh my gosh, I remember now. I absolutely loved that class because when people learn how to deal with conflict, it can change their life. And one of the biggest problems in the body of Christ is people never manage conflict. They just get mad. They blow up. They leave churches. They leave businesses. They get divorced because people don't know how to manage it. So I really leaned into the Lord. I really started praying. I felt the Lord gave me three things to, to really share. And this is not what I learned in college. Oh, this is three things I really felt that the Lord gave me to share. The first thing was when a situation, remember that word situation, when a situation arises, you have to react. Okay? A lot of times it's between two people. Sometimes it's between a person and a church, um, two people in a business, uh, a business method, um, protocol in a business, whatever it may be. But a situation arises. And in any situation, you deal with it. Um, Mr. Swindoll used to always say that, and when I heard him share this, he would always say, you know, when something happens, it's 10% of what actually happens and 90% of how you respond. I've seen people blow the smallest little minute thing out of proportion. And then I've seen people have huge things happen to them. And they just deal with it and go on. Don't really let them bother them. So number one is a situation. Sometimes a situation arises. And if you are centered in God, you will be able to deal with it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. A lot of people, when a situation arises, they want to respond out of their own mindset versus leaning on the Lord. And one thing that I do, when something happens, a situation arises, I sit back and I say, okay, Lord, what are you really doing? What are you really saying? And friends, let me tell you, this video is so important because I've seen so many people leave churches, be mad, divorce people. I, I remember this one guy I was talking to one day. He, he had, he's been divorced four times for the same reason. And I'm like, sir, it, it's in your mindset. The same thing keeps occurring. He never dealt with the situation. I've seen ladies been married three times, four times. And they, there's a certain situation when they would come to a place, no matter who she's married to, you know, she would, she would divorce them. You know, I can't tell you how many people, how many people, how many people I've talked to. How long were you at your last church? 12 months. How long were you at your last church? 11 months. How long were you at the church before that? 10 months. How long were you at the church before that? 13 months. I'm like, okay, there's a time pattern. You know, they never deal with it. They don't manage their conflict, but it matters. The Bible talks about being planted. There's a lot of people that if you were ever planted in the right place, the right marriage, the right business, 
had a young man come to me recently, and he was so frustrated with his boss. And I'm like, aren't you making $20,000 a year more than you ever have? Yep. Don't they have great benefits? Yep. Everything's always been good until this one situation? Yep. Why don't you just really ask the Lord what's going on, and before you just blow out of there, think about how good that company's and the owner's been to you. He said, oh my goodness, I was about to make a huge mistake. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> and I gave you a reference, okay? Um, situations, situations arise. Lean back and say, God, what are you saying in this situation? And the Lord will speak to you, okay? There's a reason God gave me this word for today. Okay, number two. First one was situation. Another one is a conflict can come and, and, and arise because there is something on the inside of you, a trigger point, something that you've never dealt with. Years ago, somebody did something to me. Oh, it was, it was bad and I got so mad and I was rebuking the devil and I was, just, and I was rebuking the devil cause, cause all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And the Holy Spirit said, why are you rebuking the devil when I'm the one trying to get that out of you? Okay. Here's what happens. When an emotion, wrong ideology, theology, whatever, something gets you frustrated and it comes up, what do we do? We suppress it down. It might be anger. We suppress it back down. It's still in us. W what about unforgiveness? We suppress it down. You ever seen that person? You know that one person that did you so wrong. When you see them, it rises up and you got to walk away and you press it down. It's because you never dealt with it. You still got a trigger point. You will never operate in your God-given ability to the fullest until you manage the conflict that is on the inside of you. When you see that person, why are you mad? When, when that person, when, when you see them, what frustrates you? You know, I remember one time there was a, a guy who really frustrated me a lot when I was younger. And one day I said, Holy Spirit, why does this guy frustrate me so much? And the Holy Spirit said, because there was somebody in your family that did the same thing to you, and it frustrated you when that person acted like this person's acting. And then you had somebody in school when you were younger, uh, a coach, that, did, that would act the same way towards you. And you've never dealt with when somebody acts that way towards you. Okay? You, you, you never dealt with it. So I just said, God, I, I forgive that person. I, I, I just release them when I speak blessing. And I pray that when people treat me like the way this person does, it doesn't bother me. A few months later, a guy I was doing some ministry with did the exact same thing that guy did to me. And I said, hey, bro, hey, hey. Um, you know, don't respond to me like that, okay? I said, that was kind of a little, you know, you're trying to shoot a dagger at me. We're going to do ministry together, bro. Let, let's. I was like calm. I can't tell you how many times... I've been in public, and I would have an old trigger point, and somebody would do something that would trigger me, and I was like, I remember one time my wife looked at me and said, "Woo, look at you. You've grown. That used to be a trigger to you. And I said, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm growing. And, and she said, ooh, I like that. That looks good on you. I said, oh, girl, I got a lot of growing. You know, <laughs> you know I remember one time somebody said something to me in public, you know, it was, was really harsh. You know, hey, if you're rolling in the kingdom of God and you're a revivalist and you're flowing in the apostolic, prophetic, religious demons will find you. And, and I just kind of responded nice. And my kids were like, Dad, that used to be a trigger point. I'm like, yeah, but I'm growing, okay? But um, I'm growing, okay? Number one, situations arise. Conflict management matters on those. Number two, Okay, things on the inside of you, you've been hurt from the past, inner conflict management. You got to learn how to deal with that. You know, conflict, when it's not dealt with, will lead you down the wrong path. 
when conflict comes up, if you learn to manage it with the Holy Spirit, find out why you're acting that way, why you're responding a certain way. It, it will help you to a great deal. I absolutely love when conflict happens. Why? Because when conflict happens, you always become better on the other side. Two people come together with conflict. If they can manage it properly, they will be able to work together where they never could. I can't tell you how many times I've done marriage counseling with people and I taught them how to communicate at a better way. Do you know how many people have got divorce because they simply could not communicate conflict? They yell, they scream, tantrums, throw stuff. I'm, I'm not talking about you, anybody on here. I'm talking about people you know, okay? Um, but when you learn how to deal with conflict, hey, let's talk this out, you know, and, and, and learning how to deal with conflict, okay? Now, first one was situation. Second one was past hurts, basically, you know, learn how to deal with it. The third one is just warfare. Okay, sometimes your anointing, your being blessed with the favor and the blessing of God will irritate other people's demons. They may not have a demon. Don't think everybody comes to you got a demon. But some people have envy and jealousy, which is just as bad as a demon. The Bible says where envy is, every evil thing <laughs> exists. When people are jealous... But, you know, we'll have to guard our, our heart when somebody that we might see ourselves as an equal with or promoted in something. You know, it starts when you're in kindergarten and this person got five goldfish, but the teacher only gave you four. The audacity of some people. You know, whatever it may be. But you have to learn that when warfare comes in, have you ever been doing something? Like recently, I put out this prophetic word that, the Lord spoke to me. It was just, I mean, God gave it. It was so strong. And, you know, like on social media, 30% of the comments were so hateful. But the other 70% were people who were talking about how this word spoke to them and, and just helped them. And some people said radically changed their lives. You know, when, when warfare comes at you, because some people will come at you, you know, you you got to learn how to deal with it. So you know, a lot of times, warfare is the enemy, and you have to learn how to deal with it, rebuke it, take authority and dominion over it, cast it out. Sometimes people don't have a demon. They're coming in through the door of jealousy and envy. God, listen, God will tell you when to rebuke it and cast it out. Because listen, you cannot counsel a demon you got to cast it out okay you, you cannot counsel a demon you can only cast it out but there's times when when there's a warfare god will give you a strong word to share with somebody now here's the hard thing if they don't want to have conflict management because it matters if they don't they need to go over here and you need to move forward. Because warfare, around, have you ever, you know, in ministry, there's so many times ministers have had that one or two people in, in, in ministries that, that just, they're always coming against them. Well, they're sent by the enemy. That's just when you say, hey, you, you, need, to, you need to go on. And it's just because you got to move forward. But some people don't understand and there's a warfare. I hope this is making sense. This is a, a big teaching. On, on warfare, but when warfare arises, you got to know is this the lack of knowledge from somebody? The Bible says people will be be destroyed for the lack of knowledge, or is it demonic? If it's demonic, get out of here in Jesus' name. If it's a lack of knowledge, give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And if they don't receive it, they can go over here because they're being led astray. You don't need to be led astray. And so those are the three things: conflict management matters. There was a, a minister one time. We, <laughs> I got a call to preach at a conference, and it was one of those conferences that you get really excited to preach at. I'm like, yeah, man, I'd love to. Man, I've loved y'all for years. Y'all always have amazing conferences. I said, who was all speaking? I said, oh, my gosh, I love that guy. Oh, that guy's a general in the faith. Who else you got? Oh, man, that person. I love him and respect him. I've done some conferences with him. Who else you got speaking? Oh, 
Oh. He said, yeah, he said that, that, that y'all aren't the closest of friends. I said, we ain't even friends, bro. I said, but don't worry. We're both very mature. I'll call him. We'll get it all worked out. I called him. Hey, bro. He said, hey, man, good to hear from you, JoJo. I said, yeah, yeah, man. Um, I know we don't see eye to eye. He said, no, we don't on some things. But we're both kingdom, love the Lord. Let's make this conference a success. He said, let's do it. Let me tell you about this guy. When I got ready to share, because I shared first, this dude sat on the front row, pulled out a pen and a notepad, had all the honor and respect you could ever want, said, hey, man, I'm praying for you, you know, praying you have great insight for the people. Phenomenal. We don't see eye to eye on some things. But the honor and respect he showed, what did I do? Same thing. When he preached front row, I looked at him and said, I got you covered. When he got up there to preach, and when it was over, he said, bro, I, I really felt like you were interceding for me while I was up there. I said, we have a common goal. We managed the conflict. Both spoke at the conference, powerful conference, one of the best I've ever been a part of. Learn to manage conflict. Some people, listen to me, some people are not thriving in ministry because they don't know how to manage conflict. Some people aren't managing in the region they're in because they can't manage conflict. Some people aren't moving forward in business because they can't manage conflict. Some people are not having successful marriages because they can't manage conflict. Marriage is simple. The Holy Spirit and your wife is always right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> It's like that in our house, though. My, my wife's really smart, and uh, so I always listen to her and the Holy Spirit. But no, seriously, manage your conflicts in life. There's been times that I say, God, why do I feel this way towards a situation, a person, what is it, or, and, and the Lord, the, when I say a person, sometimes it can be, um, a situation with the person or it can be just that trigger and the Lord will say because there's something in you that you need to get rid of um, a lot of times people act wrong because they're insecure you know and I said Lord God I never want to be insecure or jealous of anybody I want to help you know, champion other people and then the other one is like there's sometimes I'm I feel kind of weird around some people and the Holy Spirit will say because they're oppressed depressed or, or they're demonically influenced um, that that's when we're going to deal with some stuff. <laughs> okay. And so there's a conflict there and you have to deal with it, but be mature in it and understand, say, all right, God, what's going on? Is it me? Is it them? Is this spiritual? Is this natural? What is it? And the Holy Spirit will tell you because he loves you and he loves the kingdom purpose that he placed on your life. So conflict management matters. Okay. I love you guys. Hope this helped. Always pray big. And if you want prayer, go to the website, jojodawson.net. There's a place for prayer on there. A lot of information about our mentoring program and all that we got going on. We love helping people move forward. Okay. Love you guys and have a blessed day.